Good morning, everyone. And it's so good to be here again, as always. So good to study God's Word and to share God's Word together. And so, love to be here. Um, I'm in a new location today. I'm actually over at the church, and it's quieter and better, and hopefully we'll be here more often now. But uh, anyway, so good to have you with us today. Yesterday, if you watched, we were talking about the Word of God and the fact that God's Word will always prevail. We understand that it will always triumph. Our Lord Jesus Christ will always triumph. His Word will always triumph. We, as His people, will always triumph in Him and certainly in His Word then because of Him and His Word. And, and that's so important for us to understand and to remember, especially in days like this, especially in difficult, trying circumstances, whatever uh, is going on, whatever may be happening. And so we praise God for that. And we just ask that God's grace will continue to lead us, continue to compel us to move forward in His Word. And so I want to spend, at least this is the plan now, spend the rest of this week each day talking about God's Word and looking at a different passage, a different section in the Bible that encourages us to study the Word and to be in the Word more. And so today I want to look at Psalm 1. Psalm 1 is a wonderful psalm. It's one that I've always enjoyed a lot and certainly praise God for. And really it's a lot about this, about God's Word and our need for it and our how we should be in it. And so here's what Psalm 1 says. First of all, verse 1 says this, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And so the psalmist says that blessed or happy, truly blessed is the man, the woman, whoever, who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, does not stand in the way of sinners, and does not sit in the seat of the scornful. So in other words, if you want to be blessed, then don't hang around wicked people. Don't do the things wicked people tell you to do. Don't go to them for counsel. Don't go to them for advice. Don't follow their advice, certainly, if you ever get it, without asking for it even sometimes. Don't do what wicked people do. Don't be about wickedness. Do not walk in their counsel, do not stand in their way, do not sit in their seat. And you notice the progression there as well between first of all walking or from walking to standing to sitting. Each gets more comfortable. And so I think we see that in life. It becomes more comfortable, good or bad. Whatever we do and start to do becomes more comfortable to continue to do. And so we want to make sure we're doing that which is right. And that means that we're seeking God. We're seeking His Word. That is what is right, and that is what we most need. And so it continues now. Verse 1 says, don't do what's wicked, but human nature, you can't just stop doing something. You have to instead start doing something else. We can't just say we're not going to do the wicked thing. We have to replace it with a righteous thing. And so that's what we read now, verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. So don't spend time with the wicked. Don't follow their lead. Don't follow their quote-unquote wisdom, which is lies as we know. Don't spend time with the wicked. Don't seek their counsel, but delight in the word of God. Blesses the man who delights in the law of the Lord, in the word of God, and in that law, in that word, he meditates day and night. Day and night. So what does that mean? That we should be spending time in the word of God, day and night, morning, afternoon, evening, whenever we can. It will never hurt us to spend more time in the Bible. You know, it is never a risk to spend more time with God. It's never a risk to trust God more. It's certainly never a risk to spend more time in God's Word. It can only help. It can only help. And so we want to spend more time in God's Word, not less time, especially 
in the days in which we're living. And so again, we try to avoid the wicked, but in replace of that, we delight. We long for, we love the word of God. And listen, none of us love the word of God as much as we should. I'll be the first to admit, and I want to love the Bible, and I think I do to an extent, but I will be the first to admit that I don't love the Word of God as much as I should. I don't read it as much as I should. I want to read it more. I want to study it more. We all need to. We all need to realize that by the grace of God, because it's going to take the grace of God for us to truly do this, but by the grace of God, we can learn to delight in His Word more. We can learn to long for His Word more. And we can learn to meditate on his word more, day and night. And what does it mean to meditate on something? It means to actually stop and consider it, to actually think about what it's saying. So often we do read the Bible, we read it really fast, and we don't take the time to think about what it's saying. We don't consider it. And look, if we're just reading it, and we're not actually thinking about it, we're not letting it change us, it really doesn't matter that much. We need to be hearers and doers of God's word, right? By the grace of God. Well, that means we have to meditate on it. Think about what it actually says. What is it teaching? What is it telling me to do or not do? And so we avoid the wicked in verse 1, by the grace of God. Verse 2, we look to delight ourselves in God's word, meditate in God's word, and look at the promise of verse 3 now. Because God knows that we as people, we need a reason to do something. We can't just be told to do something. We need to know why we should do this. We need a reward to do this. We think it's just little kids who need a reward for doing good things. It's big kids too. We all need something to strive after. We all need a reason, a prize, so to speak, to do the right thing. Well, look at the prize here in verse 3. This is pretty amazing. So the man that avoids the wicked as much as we can, of course, delights in God's word. Look at what the Bible says. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which is a good thing for a tree. If you're a tree, you want to be by the water. That's where you want to be. So you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Stop and think about that for a second. I love that. I love that. Speak of meditate. Meditate on that. Bring forth his fruit in his season. So what is that saying? That, that God has fruit that we're to bear, and in the right time, and in the right way, we will bear that fruit. We will have the success we're supposed to have in God, in ministry, in this life, at the right time, in the right way, if we seek God. We'll be like those trees planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. We have to be patient. You see, so often we want it now, right? We want everything right now. And that's not what God says. We're not going to get everything right now. And people quit and people stop and they stop reading the Bible. And they stop praying. They stop going to church and they stop seeking God because they're not getting it right now. But the Bible says you're not going to get it right now. You will get it, but it's going to take some time usually. But keep going, keep persevering, keep pressing forward. Delight yourself in the word of God and you'll be like that tree. And you'll be planted by the rivers of water. And you will bear your fruit in your season, in God's perfect season, and God's perfect time. His leaf also shall not wither, verse 3 says, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen to that. And look, that doesn't mean that everything will be good all the time. We have to compare Scripture with Scripture. Scripture tells us life is hard. Trials come. Suffering comes. But what does it also say? God works everything together for good for those who love Him. And so even in our quote-unquote failure, even in what looks like failure, is actually success in God. If we keep going forward, we will prosper. Everything we do in God's timing and God's way will prosper. In the end, we will bear the fruit we're supposed to bear. We will have the ministry we're supposed to have. We will have the impact that we're supposed to have if we keep going, if we stay steadfast and committed to God's word. But we need to do that. Again, we absolutely, in the times in which we're living, more than ever before, we need to do that. We need to be committed to the Word of God. This right here, 
right? You have your own at home probably, but this Bible, we need it now more than ever. We need God's word. We need to listen to what it says, meditate on what it says, apply what it says. Far too many Christians, and I think sadly some of them are not even true Christians, far too many professing Christians, and then maybe even some true Christians, do not read the Bible near enough. We need to be in God's word so much more. And hopefully in this time, we can do that. We have the time to be in God's word more now than we normally would. So let's take advantage of that. Let's be like that tree planted by the rivers of water. Let's make our delight in the word of God. If we do, we will be blessed. We will be used. We will press forward in the victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. But we need to be in the word of God. We said yesterday that God's word will always prevail. It tells us it will always prevail. Well, if that's the case, why not be on the side of that which always prevails? Why not do that which will always prevail? Let's be in God's word more. Let's seek it. Let's trust it. Let's apply it more and more and more. And so I thank God for the word of God. If you kept reading Psalm 1, it's just very clear that God will bless the righteous and judge the wicked. Amen to that. But we're going to stop there at verse 3. Let God bless us today for our love for his word. Let our love grow. Let us ask God to help our love for his word to grow. And hopefully this week it will even grow. As I said, every day this week, we're going to look at something different the Bible says about itself and our need for it. And so we're looking forward to that. We thank God for that. Thank God for you being with us today. Of course, we'd encourage you to share this with others and let people know about these videos that we do each day. And most of all, tell people to get in the Bible. That's the best thing you could do for someone. Encourage them to get into God's Word and you yourself. And me, myself, let us get into God's word more and more and more. We will never regret it. We will be blessed for doing it. And it will honor God as well as bless us. And so praise God. So have a wonderful day today. Read that Bible today. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. God bless.